Hello and welcome to the MicroFocus section on Identity Governance Administration. I'm Rick Wagner. I am uh, the Product Management Team for MicroFocus um, Identity Governance Administration. And I'm here with Patrick. Um, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Patrick? Yeah, I'm Patrick Eckin. I'm a Product Manager MicroFocus focused on Identity and Access Management. Okay, so to get things kicked off here, you know, one of the foundational things at MicroFocus is we have a firm belief that identity powers everything. And identity is very fundamental to all of your IAM business practices, but specifically around identity governance and administration. Yeah, as you know, as you know, Rick, like we've been doing identity for a long time at MicroFocus. So we have thousands of customers who use our identity products. And what we've learned from them is that if you make identity the cornerstone of your identity and access management efforts, it will simplify integration problems and dramatically reduce complexity. Yeah, and, and you know that's it's kind of interesting because we've definitely seen this on our customers to help them realize the value of that can be experienced when implementing an identity and access management project um, and setting identity as that key foundation. So, you know, the, the other thing, since we do say that identity is the foundation for not only IGA, but everything, but realistically, when you think about all of the disciplines around identity and access management, once you have that identity foundation built with IGA, you, it definitely expands to everything else. Um, <clears throat> so things like privileged identity management, access management, multi-factor authentication, and even some uh, important things like security information and event management when it comes to understanding what identities um, and how they interact with the applications and what they're doing inside the applications once the access is granted. Things like data access governance. Um, who do you know who has access to the unstructured data and uh, what what type of even what type of information is in that unstructured data that you need to govern, um, and most in, and of course one of the most exciting areas and, and highest growth areas around identity management is customer identity and access management. Yeah, and that, that's really another key point as far as you know, just, just to, to dealing with identity is a foundational capability, right? Uh, you think about customer identity. Bringing that into your regular practices around identity that you've been doing for years with your employees, other relationships with your organization. Now you want to do that with customers, and you don't want to do that completely different and completely independent of that. This is a way of doing that in a, in a very uh, consistent, comprehensive way. And you know, one one of the things about this is, you know, if we say that identity is foundation, one of the things that we deliver is the ability to actually not only create identity for IGA, but build an identity foundation that you that powers your organization. <clears throat> so Patrick, why don't you point us a little bit through what we can, uh, uh, our perceptions of the identity foundation and what it means to your organization. Yeah, definitely. So it's really um, a combination of a number of critical capabilities that you need for a true identity powered solution to really, to really power your solutions based on identity. So to create the identity foundation, what we've done is brought together a number of components. And if you think about it, the kind of major pieces of that is the data itself, the identity data, um, an identity model, you know, describing how that identity, how identities relate to each other, what kind of access they have, doing things like business role management and so forth to describe to describe the um, the users, the identities of the organization in the way that fits for you. Um, common identity services, you know, the same workflow business process management system, a risk system that's across everything that you do from an IAM perspective. And of course, identity analytics, our identity intelligence component, really powers all of this and really takes it to the next level. You know, and, and one of the key aspects of the Identity Foundation is, um, that's actually instrumental to this, is this concept of an event model. And really understanding the identity, <clears throat> its relationship to the organization, and all of the different events that happen throughout the life cycle of that identity and as they occur. Not looking at it um, at a point, point in time, looking at it all the time. So that as soon as something about that identity changes, then it does have an update to everything related to that. Does, it, does an update to the identity model need to change? As an example, if somebody changes jobs, what about the org structure? What risk does that mean? what business process flows need to happen, and then how, what are the analytics associated with that? It really is, because a lot of people think of identity just as an object, right? This person has this identity, but it's really 
dream you know, your relationship to that identity and what that identity is doing. So as you're saying with events, knowing everything that happens to that identity and everything that that identity is involved with, being able to capture that and react to that, that's why identity is so fundamental and foundational to everything here. And then also this, this uh, concept of the data itself, right? The data that we bring, we believe that bringing that data into this, into this uh, model or this solution all of that data, all of your identities, whether they're you know, people like employees and contractors, whether they're things, or whether, whatever they are, bringing those in, being able to aggregate those into one uh, consistent, one comprehensive view of that identity, and being able to bring in all your applications and have the identities of those applications as well, and the access and so forth. And not just that, but all of the historical data involved in that. So this becomes, this data component of the foundation becomes a critical piece of your own your organization, you get visibility into what people have access to, you get visibility into what they're doing and what's happening in your applications. So it's really, really critical. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not what should they, not in, in addition to what they should have access to, it's what do they really have access to, and right. then being able to react to that appropriately. So now that we really build a, a strong identity foundation, you know, the next piece of that is how, how do I leverage that, right? What value does that bring to me? So if you have that identity foundation, you know, you now you can very easily apply the disciplines of identity management, identity governance, and data access governance. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so our, our identity governance administration product is really a combination of identity management capabilities, identity governance capabilities, and data access governance capabilities, all built on the identity foundation as part and parcel of that. It's all included with it. So it becomes uh, the, the, the integration across these components is seamless, right? It's all integration. The common integration points that the foundation provides, they're integrated to common data, common services, and common analytics. So you don't have to invent all those things for each of these particular uh, different silos of, of, of capability. Absolutely critical. And you know, the, the interesting thing about once you have this identity foundation, as we, allude, as we spoke to earlier, you know, identity is the foundation that you can build on. So think about this and, and how it would expand across all identity and access management disciplines that we talked about before. So if you have, once you build this identity foundation, um, you're not only doing provisioning things from an identity management or administration standpoint, governing that identity, looking at the unstructured data, but thinking about how you would, could very easily and simply expand that to the other disciplines we spoke to earlier, like privilege. Um, that that's just a, 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 and what a person with privileges has the capability of doing. I can understand that because it's the same identity that I'm governing. Things like authentication. <clears throat> it's the same authentication of that identity that I'm governing. It's the same identity that I'm allowing access to. So now that I have this one single view of identity, I have this one single view of application, it's far simpler and much more advantageous to your organization to be able to apply the individual policy differences, uh, dimensions of anything that's related to identity and access management. Yeah, absolutely, you're spot on with that. Um, I like to think of it, when people think of the effort that's involved in adding a new component to New access management system, and the on ramp for that is pretty steep. You know, trying to get that to integrate with all of your other products that are involved in IAM, it's all it's, it's extremely difficult, time consuming, um, and requires a lot of maintenance. So what we've done is, is kind of smooth that on ramp, try to make it a lot easier to have the next step, to have all those things work well together. Well, th think about it in this angle too. I mean, let's talk about you know, every organization changes over time. I mean, think about the advantages of I'm bringing a new application into my environment. What does that mean? You know, I, I can simply just bring that um, application into the identity foundation. I can model it against the identities, and now it's far easier for me to bring in new applications as I, as I maybe adopt something that's SaaS and retire something on prem. Think about the you know the other changes around organizational changes in your company. You buy another company or you divest. How easy is it to now achieve those the value of purchasing that other company if you can onboard those people, onboard the applications, get them integrated into a single view, and thus 
apply all the identity and access management disciplines to it. So you can get to the fundamental reason why you made that investment to drive business, right? So the identity foundation not only helps you to apply the disciplines, it's also a key business driver for um, major, from the most minor events to the most major events as your, or, as your business um, grows and evolves. So, you know, we talk a lot about that, but, but let's, let's focus in a little bit on some of the key benefits here. So, Patrick, um, take us through some of the key benefits of an identity foundation. Yeah, in, in IGA specifically, right? So our identity governance and administration solution, which is built on that, that strong foundation of identity, um, IGA really provides organizations with this ability to manage access you know, overall and to conduct, conduct oversight of that access, improve that to, to stakeholders like auditors and so forth. So in, in many cases, a main value proposition of, of IGA is to make compliance demands, you know, prove that you're complying with regulations like HIPAA and SOX. But it's also critical to improve in Maintaining and security in general, right? It's a very critical factor of, of that, as well as improving efficiency of the organization, being able to make sure that people that need access get access when they need it, when people no longer need access, that it's taken away quickly and efficiently. So IGA offers um, a lot of, of value, right, in your organization and improves compliance, security, and efficiency, as, as well as other, other, other things. Um, and if we look at it from an IGA perspective, there's a ton of Very broad product. But if you look at them from three different lenses, it kind of helps to understand what we really bring to the table with Microbus Identity Covenants and Administration. And those three um, areas are visibility and insight, decision making abilities, and continuous compliance. So for visibility and insight, it's really, I mean, fundamentally, it's knowing who has access to what in your organization. And that might sound simple, simple initially, but really knowing who those people are is critical and knowing what they're accessing is critical. So what we do with IGA is allow the organization to really bring um, the ability for the business itself to add business context and translation to that data, to improve that data and enhance that data that we brought in so it's more meaningful to the business. And that includes you know, who has access to what, what applications, what data, you know, structured data, and unstructured data, and so forth. So being able to really provide additional information from a business context perspective Included risk. We include a risk system that lets the organization define the risk of access. So that means that when people are making decisions about access with our IGA product, they're well informed. We can provide really meaningful decision support for people that are reviewing access or improving access that allows them to make a competent, an informed decision. You know, is this access appropriate for this person? Do other people have this access? When was the last time they used this access? If I add this access, what will that do to the risk of the organization? So this data that we bring in, given the government system, brings visibility and insight into that. And I, and I know analytics here too, because analytics powers all of this. We have a very powerful analytics capability that we'll talk about in a few slides. That's how we are able to provide, analyze all the data we have, and really provide meaningful information back to the users. Um, the other lens is decision making. And, and the ability to make better decisions, and IGA in many ways is about making Right? It's about knowing what people have access to and deciding whether or not they should continue to have that access, um, deciding whether or not someone should get, initially get that access and so forth. So making decisions about access is really important. And what IGA does is let you do that in a couple of ways. One is the policy. We provide a very robust business uh, and technical role management system and combined with our access policy system to define what people should have access to. Right? So we allow you to do policy and make statements that the proper what is appropriate access. So when you know what people have access to through the visibility lens, and you're deciding they should have that access, that sets the stage for being able to really improve security, because all you really need to do is manage the difference. And of course, um, other, other uh, decision-making capabilities in IGA are things like identity lifecycle management. You want to help the organization understand when someone gets promoted, what should happen, what access should be given, what action should be taken away, as well as standard functionality in IGA, like periodic access to human certification, access request and approval. All those processes are about making decisions. And we do everything we can to make that a better and more informed process. And again, identity analytics powers a lot of this, right? Or all of this. It helps us to understand what the baselines are 
when we say this person should have access, we use analytics to determine whether that person does have access or if it's appropriate and meets their needs. Because those policies are appropriate for the organization. So analytics is another key part of the ability to make better decisions. And then finally is this continuous compliance um, session where we provide the ability for many of our competitors at one point in time periodically. So we get your data periodically, and you periodically review that data, maybe quarterly or maybe every six months or annually to make sure that people have the right access. And we know that's not quite enough, that's not enough, right? The day after you do that, people start to fall out of compliance. So we have a system where the data is continuous, we have more real-time data representation, so we can collect that data when we can be collected into the IGA system. We have a very strong event-based system to know when things changes and raise those events so people can, can, can uh, deal with those events and handle those events and remediate any other issues. And we have a, um, a powerful analytic system to help us do this. So the whole continuous compliance mechanism in our IGA product is designed to make it so that you know when things happen and you can choose to take it to, to remediate those immediately. We're integrated with uh, fulfillment to help desk systems and to automate it to through identity management system. And, uh, and we were also able to do what we call closed loop verification, where after you've made your decision, we've triggered uh, processes to, to, to affect that decision. We can then check and make sure that it's happened. So it's this ongoing continuous capability that we provide based on this identity, you know what the people know what they have access to, know what they're doing. There really is a different uh, a different approach to identity governance and administration. Yeah, so I mean this kind of really all ties back into that discussion on the identity foundation and being able to really powerfully represent the data and then apply common sets of policy, and then as you said, that, that event system that allows you to understand as things change, and as things change, you um, present the information to the appropriate decision makers so that they can do what they need to do to make sure people have what they need to do their job, minimize risk, um, and really make things efficient overall. So, um, you know, you spoke a lot about identity analytics, you know, and, and that's a, a big buzzword in the industry today. Everything's analytics, analytics, analytics. And, you know, of course, analytics is a key portion of this, right? And part of that identity foundation is a, uh, included in that is a centralized data warehouse. And you know, one of the things that, that we provide from an analytics perspective is um, we have built our analytics engine on top of a very purpose-built analytics data store in Vertica, which is the analytics engine that, that powers a lot of major organizations today and, and real-time, high-volume processing of analytic data. Um, but more importantly, it is how do you present that in a way to the appropriate decision makers, anywhere from an individual contributor who's trying to decide what they need to have access, all the way up to a compliance or an ex uh, compliance um, officer or anybody at the sea level so that they can actually understand that that visualization and it's in a context that's meaningful to them and present that data to them um, uh, looking at behavior behavioral data and then you know of course as we said the future of, of analytics across identity and access management uh, I'm sorry Patrick you, you were trying to say something Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm just saying that's great, you're just spot on. Our, our analyst capabilities are really leading the market, right, with this ability to leverage Vertica. And we also have a, a machine learning and artificial intelligence product called Interset that's also integrated with our staff. But um, just this an incredible opportunity here um, to really uh, improve your IAM capabilities. So we've covered a, a lot here um, in, in closing. You know, we, we encourage you to look at some of the success stories that we have out there. You know, this is one example. We, we encourage you to go to, to microfocus.com and, and look at um, our offerings, our, uh, the capabilities that we have in our customers like Medica. Um, very important, especially in, in, in the healthcare industry, which is highly regulated and has a huge demand on identity and access management, especially in the world that we live in today. Um, we thank you very much for participating in this short session with us and we look forward to talking with you further.